So, welcome once again. Uh, I think it's another round of my introduce, me introducing you, Anarchist Days. Uh, we are a self-organized um, anarchist event going through the week, organizing this thing um, for, I don't know, years already. Uh, we cover very different topics from local Dresden politics to international politics. Um, we invite people also from the other countries to talk and bring their perspectives to this uh, village that we call, some of us call home. Um, and um, yeah, we are not financed by any institutions. We are financed by donations from people who are visiting the event. Uh, and this is uh, required for covering certain costs like travel costs for the people who are coming and so on. So feel free to drop some donations. And uh, if you feel like you have a little bit of time that you can spare, you can also help um, other like organizing parts. There is a lot to do. There is also a lot to do tomorrow building down. So feel free to pass by and help us with that. And um, yeah. Uh, about this talk, um, Mahmoud is online. I think you will introduce yourself. I'm not going to do this uh, weird thing. Um, so, the 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 talk after the talk, you will have possibility to give comments uh, or to uh, ask questions uh, because it's an online talk. So there will be no like jumping out of the room and and giving some comments or something like that. Uh, please be respectful towards the other people. And um, thank you very much. Yeah, we can start. Yes, I can hear you. I can start. Okay, <laughs> I don't want to feel like talking to myself. Uh, but thank you very much for uh, the invitation and for giving me this uh, space uh, with amazing people to share with you what is happening in in the west bank and we all know that uh now none of the states in the middle east is rest every area is unrest uh, we saw the escalation in lebanon and in gaza but before going to that i want to introduce myself so my name is mahmoud and i am from a village uh, near bethlehem Bethlehem, the city in, uh, located in uh, West Bank, uh, and I uh, lived most of my life in in this uh, village. And this village has a legacy of uh, nonviolent resistance uh, uh, organized against the segregation wall and the settlements uh, since 2005 up to 2015. And we, I am part of uh, a network of nonviolent activists called Popular Struggle Coordination Committee. We are involved in different nonviolent campaigns, including the last one, which is FAZA, which is to protect farmers and shepherds while they are working their land and grazing their sheep. Uh, but also, I, I, it took uh, an opportunity to uh, uh, learn from other experiences about nonviolent resistance. So I, to an extent, uh, uh, believe that I do some academic work, but this is nothing in front of my activism. Uh, so back to, to the situation, I mean, uh, when we look at at the the Palestine issue and if we do not dig to the roots of the problem this is a problem because we will never uh, reach a solution and when we look at the symptoms of the problem then we will not uh, end the disease and that's why the failure of any negotiation process or any peace agreements or whatever, because it's all not digging to the roots. So instead of solving the, the uh, issue and ending the military uh, occupation, we are just managing this case in a way that we maintain 
uh, this uh, occupation for, forever and we give the Palestinians some kind of uh, humanitarian aid. Uh, I am saying this because this came out after October 7. This came out uh, to the people as if everything was okay, as if we uh, were uh, uh, living uh, in a liberated country and we dreamed to invade another country. Uh, to an extent like Russia when they invaded uh, Ukraine. Uh, as if it was like this. And that was a shock, a shock for us to understand how the, the people approach us and understand the conflict uh, and uh, how we are uh, ignored in a way that uh, you, as if we are liberated and not living under occupation, as myself who was born under occupation and lived all my life under occupation. Anyway, the, the story is very long, and let's make it short by saying that uh, uh, when October 7th happened, everything has changed. And changed in a way that we see Gaza is... Uh, uh, bombed Gaza is under uh, genocide and uh, all of that but also Israel exploited that situation that is happening in Gaza to take what they want in the West Bank and I am telling you Gaza is the most populated area all over the world 2 million people living in 360 square kilometer and the eyes of the Israelis are on the hills of the West Bank. So that's their dream. Their dream is to control the hills of the West Bank. And West Bank is the, let's say, like uh, the mm, vast majority of the Palesti future Palestinian state, according to whatever resolutions from the United Nations or from uh, Oslo Accords or whatever the principles of the two-state solution. So if Israel believes in a two-state uh, two solution, why they are building all these illegal colonies according to international law? Just to give you figures that when Palestinians and Israelis signed Oslo Accords, there were like 100,000 settlers living in what's so-called the occupied West Bank. And uh, uh, now, after 30 years, we have more than 850,000 settlers living illegally in, in the occupied Palestinian territories in the West Bank. So if Israel is willing to do peace, why they are bringing more settlers? And what has happened, actually, is uh, since Trump became the president of the U U.S., Trump is honest. He is like... Uh, there is nothing uh, hide in his heart like Biden, who is a yellow scorpion. But uh, uh, Trump uh, announced his map, his his uh, uh, his uh, let's say a peace uh, between brackets peace map for for uh, Trump, which is we are not going to evacuate any Israeli settler. We are going to give Palestinian a state in the Sinai Desert. And that make the settlers more aggressive. So the settlers are the one who are implementing the uh, strategy of the state, the policy of the state, and they are the one who are grabbing the land of the Palestinians. They are the one who are uh, 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 ethnically cleansing Palestinians from their homes and their lands. So Trump was an opportunity for the Israelis, for the Israeli settlers, in order to expand their settlements in the, in the West Bank. And they did. And they occupy many hills, and they do uh, kick Palestinians uh, from their homes. Up to 2023, the early January, when the new government came out, this new government is a mix of between uh, far right and very far right, between Likud, Netanyahu, and Bengvir, Smotrich, all these ideological extreme people who were, a few years ago, were recognized as terrorist people according to uh, the Israeli courts. And 
those people became the power holders. They are the one who are giving the orders to the settlers to do whatever they uh, uh, want to do in the West Bank. And October 7 happened after 10 months of the Israeli, of the new Israeli government. And that is an opportunity for the settlers to do whatever they want without accountability, with full impunity. And here, the day after, the 7th of October, settlers turn soldiers. Settlers become the law. Settlers, the one who were implementing the laws. Settlers were the one who is moving in the West Bank. We wake up and the Israeli authorities blocked every single road, every single uh, uh, road that enabled Palestinians to move all over West Bank. So we were living in ghettos. Every Palestinian is living in a ghetto and without any movement. This has happened for three months, from October up to uh, end of December where movement is very limited and you cannot use the, the uh, roads that we used to use. And these roads became only for the illegal Israeli settlers who are lev living on our land. And this indicates one thing, which is what is the, fu the Israeli future policy? The Israeli future policy is an apartheid state that will not allow Palestinians even to move. So the image that you can see is that Palestinians are using uh, uh, unpaved roads, mountains to move from one place to another, sometimes on donkeys, sometimes on mules, sometimes on by cars, while on the other just a few meters away, highways only used by Israeli settlers. And this is apartheid. So the clear face of apartheid and segregation has been very clear after October 7. The second point that actually happened is uh, the expelling of Palestinian communities from their uh, homes, where settlers start to attack these villages at night, causing the death of many of them. And now in the West Bank by itself, more than 700 Palestinians were killed since October 7. The settler attacks increased three times more than before October 7. And the army did nothing. And actually what was happened, what was happening is that the government distributed guns to the settlers. And we are talking about 100,000 guns distributed to the settlers in order to terrorize Palestinians in Area C. And for you who don't know what does it mean Area C, according to Oslo, 60% of West Bank is Area C, which is under full Israeli military occupation, in which there are two laws applied, civil law applied on illegal Israeli settlers and military law that is applied on the Palestinians. So imagine this life of few uh, Palestinians living in each community when settlers attack them. They kill their livestock, they chop their olive trees, they destroy and burn their homes, they burn their cars, and sometimes they kill the Palestinians and they injure them. And if you go to the Israeli police, you will be jailed. In the best scenario, the Israeli police will not let you go back to your community. So that is how the unlaw situation that we found ourselves after October 7 as uncitizens living under 
the control of the settlers who are not interested in Gaza and their eyes is on the hills of the West Bank. And this situation has continued and more than 18 Palestinian communities were wept from the map, completely expelled from their locations and pushed to area A and area B, which is to make like concentration places like camps for the Palestinians to be inside. And there are gates at the entrance of each, let's say, uh, village or, or city full of population. And whenever they want to open, they open. Whenever they want to close, they close. I just came from Ramallah and I passed three yellow gates and I didn't manage to reach the main road. So I used the mountains to come back home uh, uh, to my house. So that's, uh, that's the scenario that has happened in the West Bank. As I mentioned before, when settlers knew from Trump plan that they will not be evicted, they start to adopt the lifestyle of the Palestinians. So they become shepherds. And there is like this pastoral outpost, if you search them on internet, you can find them, in which they take the land of the Palestinians. Of, of the Palestinians. One settler in the Jordan Valley controls land, control land more than the Palestinian Authority, more than the Palestinian government, more than Area A, one settler. So these things are happening where Palestinians left alone to the uh, 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 Israeli settlers to attack them, to humiliate them. And if Palestinians resist, then they will be killed. If they defend themselves, then they will be killed immediately. So the army in the West Bank now, their duty is to be sure that settlers can commit their crimes against Palestinians without any reaction from the Palestinians. So that's one scenario uh, that start to happen after October 7. The second scenario is the expansion of the settlement. No one is saying to Israel why you are building illegal settlements in the occupied uh, West Bank. And even in some countries, they do not recognize that Israel is occupying Palestine. They think that we are the one who are occupying Israel. So this means on the long term that there is a transfer plan that some settlers are openly calling for Palestinians leave peacefully to Jordan the distance between West Bank and Jordan is less than 100 kilometers. If you need buses, we offer you buses and we, we, we let you to leave to Jordan. And if you do not leave, these are leaflets distributed uh, uh, to the Palestinians. These are leaflets uh, advertised on social media and Facebook, Instagram and so on. And if you do not leave, you will face the same as you faced in 1948. They mean the Nakba. So this is something in order to push the Palestinians outside Palestine, outside uh, to the east of the river, to Jordan, to any other place, just leave. And they, their message to the Palestinians is the good Palestinian is the dead Palestinian. So there is no difference whether you are a Palestinian in Gaza carrying a gun or a poor Palestinian in the West Bank. You do not do anything. Both are the same. You are in the queue and one day your turn will arrive and you will be, you will be killed. Whether you are even a Palestinian living in Israel. You are waiting for your turn to be slaughtered because they don't want to see Palestinians in Palestine. 
the way that they are behaving on the ground. When October 7th happened, they start to map Palestinian activists and they start to uh, uh, kill some of them. A friend of mine who, and they killed him with his son. I am talking about the settlers. The settlers who doesn't care about about the sanctions, about the accountability, and they know that they are enjoying impunity. The settlers who carry double nationalities, who could be uh, Germans, could be Americans, could be French, could be Italians, could be any other nationality, and they don't care. And they go to Germany with open eyes after committing crimes in Palestine. In front of my bedroom, five times they came and they parked to provoke us in front of my, my, my uh, bedroom. My friend, my friend who was farming his land, three settlers attacked him. They broke both arms, both of his arms. And when the police arrived, they arrested my friend and they didn't even investigate the settlers. In many cases, the settler assassinated Palestinians on spots. Many times they killed hundreds of sheep, goats, cows. They don't want you to be productive. So the story is very long about what the settlers are doing and how they are implementing the, their policies in the West Bank to take as much as they can from the land to push Palestinians in ghettos and to make them living a miserable life so Palestinians will live smoothly. And this is a smooth catastrophe, smooth Nakba. So, Israel is using everything against us as a weapon, water. They cut the water on us. Everyone now is waiting for their turn to drink water. Even in the West Bank, every two weeks we have water in the pipes, in the network. While all of our water that is from the reservoir next to my village is going to the settlements on the other side. And then from there, whenever they want to send us some money, some uh, water they send. If not, they cut the water off. And imagine the farmers, imagine the shepherds, imagine every aspect uh, uh, of, of this life. Three days ago, an elementary school east of Ramallah in a Bedouin village, four settlers masked, attacked the school. They broke the hand of a teacher and they beat Israeli activists who was there with the teachers with the, uh, in the school. And when the army arrived, you know what they do, what they did. They arrested the teachers, the uh, head of the school, and they let the settlers go. So this is, this is the democracy of Israel. This is how Israel is behaving in, in, the, in the West Bank. Clearly, openly, they are there to kick Palestinians, to lay the ground for the settlers to do whatever they want, to annex land, to uh, ex uh, expel Palestinians from their homes. Now, if it comes to the trees, to the poor olive tree, that the youngest olive tree in Palestine is older than the age of, the, of Israel, in which Israel is younger than my father's age. When they burn fields of, of olive trees, you know like how much Palestinians rely on olives. Last year, we missed the harvest. We missed the harvest and no one was able to pick their olives. Tons of olives we missed and 
thousands and thousands of elevate trees were burned and that's because they want everything burned especially the palestinian environment you know if you throw your cigarette in israel from the window of your car you will be uh, maybe you will go to jail for a year but if you burn a field of olive trees in the west bank you are a hero so that is israel that is the villa in the jungle that is the only democracy in the middle east and i am talking to you about stories that happened with me with my family with my friends and the people i know so that's something maybe you do not see on the media in the west or the in the mainstream media in the west because you do not have safe space you do not have freedom of expression living in germany oh my god if they give me the citizenship of germany tomorrow i will refuse it i don't want to live in a, a country like germany who do not give the people the freedom of expression when it comes to dehumanizing another another people so that's why we were shocked also internationally because of the internationals who were like oh my god as if as i said at the beginning palestine were liberated and they dreamed to invade israel as if uh, the same as russia when they invaded ukraine this is the western message that we received when we looked at the mainstream media oh my god what is this where are the efforts of decades of working on international the conclusion we came out is that this is an opportunity for the people in the west to look back and the kind of knowledge they are uh, they are uh, receiving how their governments manage to create obedient societies to point every single citizen is an agent for this that's sad that's sad to see the people unable to see the sun rising from the east we cannot argue about the sun if it rises from the east or the west everyone is seeing it during the nakba in 1948 maybe we didn't see the damage the 500 something villages destroyed and we argue about it we would we want to call it the birth of israel or the nakba imagine this this uh, kind of knowledge that they are giving you over decades and decades why why we are closing our eyes on what is happening in palestine when it is live on tvs on social media and still your governments your media is fooling you disrespecting your minds that is not fair i know i am not talking about the people but the people must be rebellions the people must stand up the governments must respect the minds of the people so what is the value of all what what we are receiving from education so if i i want to send my son to study where in berlin or in somalia no i want to send my son to somalia at least there they will receive good education but pure knowledge not colonized knowledge so that's that's the the issue we walked up and there is a huge anger against the international government in a way that the everyone is coming to shake hand with netanyahu and the netanyahu is disgusted from them just send us weapons we don't want to host you yet there is an opportunity came out from this the opportunity is among the youth we saw that the younger generation all over the world wake up and stand up in, in to the rights of the palestinians and they said there are many places where we can have the source of the information 
the right information, not the wrong information that we receive from the mainstream media. So no more the governments in the West are rest, relying on elderly people who are living the, uh, the, the, the guilt of the history and b b by remaining silent to what is happening now in Palestine. So we, as, as popular committees, as a nonviolent network, when we saw that settlers are attacking people, attacking people everywhere, we launched a campaign. This campaign, we call it uh, FAZA, or Support Palestinians, Defend Palestinians, in which we call internationals to come to Palestine, to be with the farmers, to be with the shepherds, to live the daily life of the Palestinians in a way uh, because the daily life of the Palestinians has changed. No one is able to move, no one is able to farm their land, no one is able to graze their sheep. So internationals start to arrive to Palestine. And they are now accompanying Palestinians. And you know what? Last week, an Israeli sniper shot an American citizen in the head and killed her. Aisha is a Turkish American citizen. She was standing observing the brutality of the Israeli army. And an Israeli sniper shot her in the head, killing her immediately. What kind of a human they are when they kill a civilian, clearly international, and they shoot her in the in the in the in the head. Yesterday, I was in a meeting with other international volunteers. By the way, we received more than 100 something internationals since July up to now. And in October, there will be more and more. Yesterday, I met some of the volunteers who are there, who were in a village south of Nablus in the West Bank, when the settlers start to attack the village and they start to attack internationals, one international was filming. An Israeli soldier approached her and he speaks in an American accent and she is American. So you see, when you as a citizen decide to be in the right side of history and the wrong side of history, this American citizen choose to be a soldier attacking civilians in an occupied Palestinian ter territory. And this woman, uh, decided to be on the right side with the civilians who are living under the military occupation to protect them. And he told her, he told, stop filming. You are hurting us. And I wish that I give you the gun and shoot me instead of filming me. So this indicates how much they are afraid of the camera, afraid of the truth the truth that they managed to hide for 76 years. The truth that they pass this as a religion conflict. Forgetting that I am an indigenous Jewish. Netanyahu came from Poland, but I am the ancient of Abraham, stayed in this country. Whether I am Muslim, Christian, Jewish, whatever. So that's why I am saying we need the knowledge producers, the media, the governments to respect our minds. We are in 2024. And how come they are disrespecting our minds? How come they convert us to obedient societies, to agents, while we have the opportunity to see and to open our eyes and to raise our heads, to discover the reality, the truth? Guys, there are a lot that you can do to the Palestinians. Stand up for the Palestinians. I know the government in, in Germany bans, for example, uh, boycotting the products and so on. But who, who will prevent you when you go to the supermarket not to buy Israeli? not to, to buy Israeli products. It's your morality. 
your duty is to avoid buying Israeli products. And no government can prevent you from doing that. You can do it as an individual. Who prevents you to teach your children about the reality that we are living nowadays? Who is, uh, is still seeing that boycotting Israeli products as anti-Semitic behavior? Is this something logic? What do you want Palestinians to use if they do not use non-violent means? No, BDS is a non-violent tool. If you if you want us to drop BDS and you don't want to use BDS, do you want us to use other means of resistance? So why do not you support BDS? Why you do not stop buying Israeli products? Why you do not stop uh, 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 to continue boycotting cultural uh, activities, Israeli cultural activities? This is because we want to pass a message to the Israelis that occupation cannot continue without punishment. If you, if you want to stop being punished, you have to stop the occupation. That's the message we want to deliver to the Israeli. And, and the more we remain silent, the more the Israelis commit crimes. Another issue which is come to Palestine, come and join us in Palestine, raise the voices of the Palestinians, come see first-hand stories, go back, tell the truth to the people, what you saw, what you saw only without any bias, say what you see in Palestine. See how we are building peace from bottom. And I am talking to you and I have many, many Israeli friends who believe in the rights of the Palestinians, who believe in supporting the struggle of the Palestinians. Sadly, those Israeli groups have no space to express their opinion also, whether in Tel Aviv or any other place. They are repressed under threat, the same as us, as us Palestinians. Why? Because they are saying the truth. Because uh, they are on the right side of history. So guys, we need, we need to come together. And we, know, we don't want to underestimate any action you are doing and many other groups are doing. It's like drops of water. These drops of water will become a stream and the stream will be a river and the river will damage the wall and will, will damage colonialism and we will live in freedom. That's why, remember, remember how Israel bombed 5,000 mobiles in 5,000 Lebanese while they are sitting homes. How come we trust to drink water from Israel? How come we trust to eat from what Israel produce? How come we trust to read from what Israel produce? The one who used technology to kill people, 5,000 people in one second, there is no morality in this. And this is a clear violation of international law. So this is, think about this. Think about all of this and how this will lead to nowhere, just to more violence, more killing, and more hatred, and the wars will continue. Yet, they kill, and we, build, we get birth. They destroy, and we build. They uproot trees, we plant trees, and we are here. We are here in our, on our land. And believe me, the struggle is between two cultures, the culture of destruction and the culture of construction. And never ever the culture of destruction will remain and last. That's why it's important to stop this from happening. And you have a voice. 
in Germany, in Europe, in the UK, in the US, in the rest of the world, you have a voice. How Israel feel? Next week there will be meetings in the in the uh, United Nations. We will see how do, do they feel when the vast majority of the world are supporting the rights of the Palestinians. Only few countries, hypocritic countries like Germany, who who are quiet or against the European Union laws. Why? Why this double standard? I know that there are many questions with no answers, but I am provoking you with these questions to to become motivated to continue this, to do something, to act back home. Because when you change the mind of the people in your country, you are protecting Palestinians and Israelis. This is the way we make peace. What Israel is doing now is going to the end of the tunnel and there is no exit from that tunnel. And I am telling you the truth that Spain, Ireland, Norway and some other countries who recognized Palestine is passing a message to Israel saying if you want to stay in the Middle East you have to recognize part of the Palestinian rights and that's why we recognize the Palestinian state. While the enemies of Israel like Germany, US, UK Tell Israel, go, do whatever you want. We supply you with the weapons. You know why? Read history well, and you will know why. Because these countries are using Israel as a dirty shoes to pass the dirty mud of the Middle East. If the US, UK, Germany sit with Israel, stop uh, arming Israel, Israel will be disciplined and there will be peace. But if they keep arming Israel, they are sending Israel to hell. And no, who trusts Germany? Who trusts America? In a way that they will keep. There is an interest for, for Germany and America to maintain sub, to this support to Israel. If there will be another country that is that uh, become uh, ally with, uh, with America, they, they will leave Israel. And history is, is a, a, good, a good example of showing that. So we need to stand up. We need to protect people, whatever their religion, whatever their race, whatever their skin, color. And this is our duty. We are privileged by our knowledge because we are able to see beyond what is the mainstream media is saying and lying. I want to stop here, but I want to end with a message. Come to Palestine. Come and see. Stand with the Palestinian farmers and shepherds. Secondly, it's not our mistake as Palestinians. If Abraham bought a piece of land in Palestine, not in Berlin or London or New York back in the days, it's not our mistake if Mary born Jesus in my town. It's not our mistake if Moshe, Moses, Israel and others came and visited us in Palestine. It's not our problem if the Prophet Muhammad took transit from Jerusalem to the sky. We are humans and there is nothing called religion conflicts. There is politics, colonialism, and neoliberalism uh, that is using religion in order to exploit everything to reach their agendas. I open the floor for questions. Thank you very much. All right. Mahmoud, thank you very much. Uh, we will actually close the stream um, at this point so people can ask um, questions in the audience without being recorded or transmitted to the internet. 
Um, yeah. I'm looking at my face all the time. 40 minutes looking at my face <laughs> without seeing anyone. So no body language. Um, yeah. But um, sorry for that. Um, the privacy, right? Concerns. Uh, but yeah. So, so you see, um, the freedom of expression is not there in Germany. I told you. If you are in Palestine, you will be more safe. All right. So um, the rule is the same. You raise your hand. Uh, you actually get a microphone so everybody else can hear you. And then you ask your question. Yeah? Let's go. Um. Okay, I had a question over there. Yeah. So I have a question. Uh, you speak about the uh, Western countries delivering weapons to Israel, and I have some concerns. So obviously, I want peace and I want freedom, and that Israelis and Palestinians have equal rights and all this. And I'm really sorry for the struggle you're experiencing, but I also have concerns regarding a part of the, I say, uh, liberation that Palestine wants is occupied by religious people who don't only want a liberation, but want to expel as a re revenge or because of anti-Semitism, uh, expel the Jewish people from Israel. So, and we saw it in the past, and it's a long history, I know, but if we stop arming Israel, or at least um, giving them a chance to survive, maybe they're going to be attacked again. So how can we prevent this, or what is your answer to this, or a solution to be able to not giving Israel too much weapons, but also saving Jewish lives, or maybe make it possible that the Jews can live in this region? If if I understood the question well, if the West stop arming Israel, how they will survive? Yes, that, that's pretty much. I didn't hear the question well because the voice was away, far, far from the speakers. Ah, damn it, sorry. Um, so the question was about um, if you stop arming Israel, like, there is a big chance that the certain powers within the Palestinian community that are more like, let's say, religious extreme and um, extreme right could use that for, um, for their own gain and could use that to, to escalate the violence against the Israeli um, citizens. Or, or, yeah. And um, how can you avoid this kind of situation where you stop actually arming the people um, but you also prevent the, the escalation of violence. So what could be the scenario? Was that correct? First of all, uh, 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 why Palestinians should do that? If Israel is implementing the international law and there is no problem, let's take the international law, apply it in Palestine, and this, let's have peace forces in Palestine that prevent any clashes between Palestinians and Israelis until we have a permanent peace uh, based on the uh, United Nations resolutions and so on. Uh, uh, so that's one, one, one point. The Palestinians never ever given the opportunity to have their state to give them their rights in order to check if they will if they will uh, continue fighting the Israelis or not. Secondly, uh, when we are talking about arming Israel, at least respect the laws of the country that they import the weapons from. So when, for example, you are uh, sending weapons to for, for wars or for uh, fighting with armed people. How, why Israel is shooting hospitals? Why Israel is shooting uh, refugee camps, uh, schools, you know, what schools, uh, uh, places where uh, there are only civilians? Today, for example, they bombed a school. They killed the 22 Palestinians, one male. One male, uh, 14 children, and the rest are women. So the misuse of weapon that Israel is using without any accountability, with full impunity, 
enable them to conduct more and more massacres. Now, if the countries stop arming Israel, they can tell the Israel, implement the international law, apply the laws of Europe, uh, of human rights and so on, then everything will finish. I mean, you, you can't imagine, like, there is no hope, no wish or, or, or uh, uh, something like that to kill people. Whether you are religion or not, or whether you are uh, believe or not, there is no need. If there is, if there is no occupation, no resistance, and no need for resistance, let's apply this uh, 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 international law, and that's all for Palestinians. We need, we want our rights, and that's all. And then we don't want to fight. I told you we love life. We don't want to kill or to be killed. So when we created this power asymmetry, it's not because it's not because we want to solve this conflict. It's because we want to foster this and we want to use Israel as a shoes to pass the mud. That's why it's Israel is a military uh, uh, base for for America. The same as uh, other countries all over the world. So that, that's very simple. Israel occupying Palestine. The solution, withdraw from Palestine. Two state, one state, 15 states, that's not a problem. Give us our rights. Aren't we equal? All humans are equal. This is a basic principle. And But now there is not, no equality. There is power over power. And we are traumatized from this. You know, like, I wish you are here to see, to see the reality on the ground. And then you will understand that if this occupation ends, you will see that how Palestinians will live normally without any problem, without even hitting them. I invite Israelis to my house and who join us. And I didn't see this hatred. We can make peace. Israel must give back the right, Palestinians their right. As far as there is no sanctions, as far as they enjoy the support, why to do it? I hope this is satisfying. All right. Thank you. Um, yeah, this is... Um, sorry. So, um, are there more questions from the audience or comments? There is one hand. Uh, can you make the microphone a little bit louder so it kind of like picks up from from the other microphone? Um, yeah. Thank you for your talk. Um, that was really informative. Um, so I just wanted to know a little bit more about the kind of mutual aid that you were describing and like how you are doing this like non-violent way of looking after your community and like trying to get through what is kind of an unimaginably difficult thing to go through. Like what kind of things are you doing to support the people around you? Did you get the question? Wait, Mahmoud, we don't hear you now. One second. One second. Huh? Um, kommt nichts. Can you say something now, Mahmoud? No, the sound is gone somehow. Soll ich gucken? Mikrofon ist schon. Ah, Mahmoud, wait, wait, wait. Your microphone is off, Mahmoud. Yes, mine is off. Now you can yes. hear me? Yes. Yes. Did you get the question? 
I, I, if you repeat it for me, that will be great. Okay, uh, so the question was, uh, you were talking a little bit about the community support um, that you are doing. And the question is, um, can you give examples of this community support and mutual aid um, that the Palestinians are um, developing within um, the occupied territories uh, to survive, basically? Yeah. No, actually, uh, the, the issue is that these Palestinian communities, like farmers and shepherds, uh, they are the last one who are productive because they are anti-capitalistic people. They are eating from their axe digging, from their goats, from their sheep. So that's why the, Israeli, the Israelis are targeting them. The Israelis are targeting them because they are the one who are the most resilient, who are able to produce they are able they are the the one who survived the best during the covid they are the one who produced the food they are the one that who produced the milk what israel wants is to create dependency so those people depend on working in israel so if if they leave their lifestyle they want them to work as a cheap labor and they buy israeli products so whenever israel cut the products they are uh, poor people. Those people are not poor. Those people are rich. And uh, life in Palestine is more expensive than in Germany. And that's why the Israelis don't want to see Palestinians who are producing their food. They want to see Palestinians waiting for international aid to come. So the support of we are giving to these communities is protection. We go to protect them, to maintain their lifestyle, to keep them producers, not consumers. Because Israel wants every single Palestinian to be uh, uh, dependent on them, working in Israel or waiting for international aid. And all these are political money. So when Germany is giving Palestinians money, they put conditions. When Israel let the Palestinians to go to work, they put conditions. And that's why farmers and shepherds are the only free people who can produce their food. And when you produce your food, you are free in your mind. That's why Israel is targeting them. And that's why we are supporting them by human resources, by being with them, by helping them in cultivating their land, by accompanying them in, in shepherding their, their uh, livestock. And to keep that, because we want people to be independent, to be in, uh, economically independent. And that explains why Israel wants to change the lifestyle of the Palestinians. And we, we examined that during the COVID. The COVID, during the COVID, when people were asking, can't move, the farmers were in their fields, working, producing their, 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 their fruits, vegetables. And when, at the time when the, when the soil is ready to get pregnant in March, the, the season of planting. So that's why Israel is aware of this. Israel is destroying the pillars of the Palestinian economy so that the Palestinians will become poor and they will not be resilient. I hope this is a clear kind of. Yeah, thank you. Um, I have a question, actually, and I'm going to use my moderatory power to use it. Um, you were talking about, or you were inviting people to come. Um, can you a little bit, like, give a step-by-step -step guide on how people can come? Like, who they should contact, if they want to come, and how would it look to them, and what to expect for the people if they want to come? Uh, f yes, uh, first of all, people can visit this uh, uh, website, uh, Defend Palestine, and uh, from there, uh, you drop your uh, kind of information to be contacted and so on, and then we will contact you, and uh, we will uh, organize everything. 
we will put you in touch with some people home in Germany to explain you things about coming to Palestine. When you arrive, we will give you a training about the risk, about the laws, about all of these things, nonviolent discipline and everything. And then we send you to the Palestinian communities. Uh, this is how it goes. We offer you the accommodation. We offer you the food. Just come. Buy your tickets and come. And if you need support in buying your tickets, we can find you some money to buy your tickets. Okay, Mahmoud, thank you very much once again. We have to wrap it up here. Um, it was a pleasure to hear you.